Canada sits in a uh, sort of a double-edged sword on that. It's good for growth that the world economy is stronger. We're not heading into an imminent recession. We leaned against those risks. Mm -hmm. The bad side of it is that Canada is sitting on probably one of the largest housing bubbles of all times. Um, and uh, I've analyzed housing bubbles in the developed world, and Canada is, is really got one of a unique one to its own. The Canadian real estate market has been on a dangerous roller coaster, with prices soaring to unprecedented heights, teetering the nation closer to the mother of all housing bubbles. In recent years, the market has edged into frothy territories, bringing Canadians on the precipice of, no doubt, a looming housing apocalypse. While interest rates are on an astronomical rise, house prices are down 12% from the peak. The average house price in Canada is currently a whopping $694,170 dollars and is estimated to reach an all-time high of seven hundred and twenty two thousand sixty three dollars by 2025 these numbers don't lie they can only continue to paint a grim picture in the past decade alone housing prices in major cities like vancouver and toronto have skyrocketed by over 50 percent far outpacing the growth of household incomes a recipe for an imminent economic catastrophe recent surveys reveal a harrowing truth canadians are drowning in in debt, with household debt reaching unprecedented levels. The country has the highest household debt as a share of gross domestic product amongst the G7 nations, with 75% of it from mortgages, with a gobsmacking spike of up to 375% surpassing any other developed real estate market globally. Canada boasts the lowest average housing supply per capita among G7 nations, standing at 424 units per 1,000 people. But what exactly galvanized this exorbitant price of houses across Canada, and what dark secrets lie beneath the surface, spurring the collapse of this prolonged housing bubble. In this video, we will delve into the propelling forces driving house prices to stratospheric levels across the Great White North. This exponential rise in property values is no doubt sending Canada down a rabbit hole. As the proverbial butterfly effect, this narrative of Canada's housing bubble is a tale intertwined with global economics dynamics with a unique Canadian twist. The last significant housing bust in Canada materialized during the early 1990s recession. At that time, Canada was grappling with low commodity prices, an enormous national debt, and a weakening Canadian dollar. The possibility of Quebec's secession and a recession in the United States, Canada's leading trade partner, further compounded the situation. As the U.S. grappled with the fallout of its collapsing housing market during the Great Financial Crisis, the reverberations echoed globally, but Canada stood as an oasis of stability. Despite this stability, the Bank of Canada, influenced by international monetary policies, mirrored the U.S. Federal Reserve's actions, slashing interest rates to historic lows. This decision, while aimed at bolstering economic growth, inadvertently fueled a housing market frenzy. The aftermath of this monetary intervention was profound. Mortgage rates vehemently plummeted, and prospective home buyers found themselves armed with formidable purchasing power. This allure of low-interest loans enticed buyers to reach for massive properties previously deemed unattainable to a basic salary earner. The result was a rapid escalation of house prices, marking the onset of what would become one of the most notorious housing bubbles in Canadian history. In cities like Toronto and Vancouver, where the real estate market was already heating up. This influx of cheap credit only fueled the situation. With this great recession in cheap real estate in Canada, Asian investors, especially the Chinese, turned on the financial spigot and went on a building boom. As a means of eluding the strict Chinese capital controls, getting a Canadian passport and investing in Canada was the top choice and hedge against any form of financial disaster for financial investors and launderers. The government also turned on the taps and all hell broke loose. To exacerbate to exacerbate the situation, the country's property registers allowed beneficial owners to remain anonymous by using businesses, trusts, or nominees to hold title to property. This opaque form of ownership allowed money launderers to use their anonymity to take advantage of this significant loophole in the Canadian real estate sector. For years, the Canadian real estate market was the la-la land for financial crime. This delinquency attracted the attention and money of corrupt government officials and organized crime syndicates from across the globe 
globe, adversely affecting the nation's economy. At this point, prices started to increase and housing became more and more desirable. Locals without sufficient purchasing power got priced out of the market, while most affluent Canadians diverted their funds from traditional investment avenues and plunged headlong into the real estate frenzy. It was simply no longer plausible to build or buy affordable housing in the Maple Leaf country. Oddly, some Canadian banks have given mortgages to non-citizens with no Canadian financial history and humongous amounts to splurge while denying mortgages to citizens without the right bells and whistles. These properties, once mere dwellings, were now lucrative sources of rental income as Canadians eagerly tapped into the burgeoning demand for housing. Since then, the country's real estate market has been mercurial. This was only the beginning. Amidst the backdrop of an already tumultuous economic landscape, the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic further exacerbated Canada's financial woes. With the economy grinding to a halt due to widespread lockdowns and business closures, the Bank of Canada resorted to drastic measures, slashing interest rates to unusual lows yet again. In a surprising twist, they also embarked on a new strategy, purchasing mortgages from lenders using freshly printed cash. This influx of liquidity empowered mortgage providers to offer loans at historically low rates, some dipping below 1%. Consequently, the housing market experienced a remarkable surge, with property prices skyrocketing by over 50% in many Canadian cities within a few years. Meanwhile, lurking beneath the surface of this housing frenzy lies a more insidious issue, a severe shortage of homes. For a country so vast, this shortage felt like a paradoxical predicament, but yet the reality is stark. Canada currently boasts the lowest per capita housing supply among its G7 counterparts. To bridge the chasm and align with housing benchmarks set by nations like the US and Britain, Canada would need to embark on a Herculean endeavor. This venture would entail constructing a staggering 1.8 million homes, an ambitious feat for a country of 40 plus million, a population a little over the state of California. Owing to the recent influx of immigrants, the country is no doubt enjoying a record population growth, but the economy is yet to keep pace. As the demographic numbers keep spiraling out of control, the same cannot be said for productivity, especially with a deficit of accommodations for such a fast-growing population. The state of affairs is a practical depiction of how the cookie actually does crumble. In the idyllic landscape of the 1990s, Canada was a bastion of opportunity, offering a pathway to home ownership for middle-class families families. During this era of prosperity, the country embarked on ambitious housing initiatives to provide affordable homes for its citizens. The government, in collaboration with private developers, spearheaded numerous housing projects aiming to meet the burgeoning demand from the middle-income segment. Unknown to Canadians, the new millennium had a shocking surprise in store. The specter of a looming debt crisis laden with an onset of economic uncertainties instantly cast a shadow on the country's housing landscape, forcing policymakers to redirect priorities priorities away from affordable housing initiatives. As years passed, the once thriving housing construction ecosystem for middle-class families began to wither. Government funding for affordable housing dwindled, and private developers shifted their focus to lucrative luxury housing projects catering to the affluent elite. The dream of home ownership, once within reach for many middle-class Canadians, started to slip away, replaced by soaring property prices and dwindling options. Fast forward to 2024, the rise has gotten to a nose bleed level. Housing prices continue to surge, igniting a booming market for bullish investors. In today's economy, Canada is in the midst of a full-blown housing boom, with prices soaring to unprecedented levels in major cities like Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal. While both Toronto and Vancouver's housing markets have been driven by a culmination of domestic and international factors, Vancouver's housing market still gets plagued by foreign investment, which has been a critical driver of its high real estate prices. The average home price in Greater Vancouver is currently valued at $1,276,517. This price represents an annual increase of 4.6% and a monthly increase of 2%. Meanwhile, the City of Toronto's average home price is valued at $1,072,528, up 12% monthly, while it was up 0.1% year over year. The median home price has also risen 16.7% monthly to $875. 
$25,000, bringing it 2.9% higher year over year. Over the past 19 years, the 235% increase in Vancouver home prices has been much faster than either the inflation rate of 50% or the city's wage growth. Accompanying these numbers is the evident truth. Building houses or providing shelter for many underprivileged Canadians has become more elusive than making most other economic goods and services. The onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic has also contributed a significant quota to this current situation, skewing the economic trajectory downward. In a bid to stave off economic collapse, the Bank of Canada embarked on a bold strategy, money printing. The goal was simple, to inject liquidity into the economy and keep the wheels of commerce turning. But instead, the approach took a wrong turn, driving the nation into inflation. The housing sector in particular found itself caught in the crosshairs of this monetary maelstrom. In a desperate bid to contain the chaos, the central bank signaled a shift in strategy. Interest rates began to creep upwards, tightening the noose around the housing market's neck. The country's central bank recently raised its benchmark interest to a 22-year high of 5%, but they are just kicking the can down the road. The damage had already been done. The housing bubble, already inflated by a deluge of cheap money, had grown too large to contain. Drawing inspiration from traditional European models of mortgage financing, Canadian policymakers introduced the concept of amortization, a revolutionary idea that would change the landscape of Canadian housing forever. Unlike their American counterparts who favored short-term mortgages with hefty down payments, Canadians embraced the idea of spreading payments over a more extended period. This allowed families to purchase homes with smaller down payments, making home ownership more accessible, especially to low-income families. This innovation doesn't alter the reality that home ownership remains an elusive dream for most Canadians, with with many facing the prospect of either deferring their housing aspirations indefinitely or being saddled with mortgage debt for the better part of their lives. Although most Canadians maintain hope for a soft landing, both higher mortgage rates and softening employment conditions are a lethal combination. In the face of this mounting crisis, policymakers grapple with tough questions and decisions. How can Canada reconcile its aspirations for affordable housing with the realities of a hyperinflated market? What measures can be taken to stem the tide of speculation? Regulation and ensure housing remains within reach for all Canadians. As the nation grapples with these existential questions, a pervasive sense of hopelessness pervades the collective consciousness, casting a long shadow over the future of housing in Canada. Canada's housing bubble isn't isolated. It's part of a larger economic rotor that continues to spin the problem out of control. The question isn't whether the bubble will burst, it's when and how severe the impact will be. Classic signs of a bubble, as observed in Canada, are usually glaring. Excessive demand, speculative buying, and a worrying disconnect from economic fundamentals. The Canadian housing bubble is a ticking time bomb, and the countdown has begun. If you like this video, hit the like button and help spread the word. And remember to subscribe to get notifications on our latest news and analysis. In the meantime, check out one of these videos here to learn more. Thanks for watching.